So if I can't make you guys come to music, I'm going to make music come to you. Over the next couple of videos that I'm going to be doing here with Freddie and Eli is that we are going to teach you guys some music, have some music lessons. It's not going to be like music class. We're not going to do as much singing. I will try to include some songs for you, though. But we're going to get back into the swing of things. There's going to be some music theory, some listening, some composers, maybe even a little at-home stuff for you guys to do, too. Um, I'm going to try to include most of the music and also links to any of the other stuff I use online so that you can uh, re redo this stuff. You can also watch this video multiple times if you really don't get tired of me. <laughs> well, let's get started, shall we? Next activity we're doing is some rhythm work. I'm going to hold up some flashcards that have rhythm patterns on them. I'm going to go through what some of the terms are just so you remember. Um, and then what you'll have to do is get your own rhythm sticks. You could clap, you could snap, you could tap, uh, you could click your tongue if you really felt frisky, or you could say the words too. Or you could even get a pair of pencils. They work really well as rhythm sticks. They're not too terribly loud. They won't drive your mom too crazy, but it gives you a chance to participate as well, um, or any mix of what you want to do. So just to review some of the terms, we've got this guy by itself with one with just the stem and the note head. That's a ta, or a single quarter note, one beat. This guy with two of them stuck together, if you remember Freddy the Frog told you it's TT. How you can remember is that it comes up and it's got a connecting bar. Okay, It's called eighth notes. Two eighth notes is the same as one full beat. Okay, Each one is half beat, half plus half is one. Okay, So this one would of course be ta, TT, ta, TT. Excellent. Okay, Next one. Looks a little scary, but it's nothing to worry about. Okay, We know that this guy here is a ta. This one for pattern is tika tika. You know it's a tiki tika because it has two bars that go across. See? One, two. Those are called uh, flags. And normally when you use four of them, you tie them together so they don't flap around in the breeze. So you've got tika tika ta, tika tika ta. Very good. Make sure you're saying them back to me. Don't just, don't just sit there and stare at me. Okay, this next one. We've got a tika tika, we've got tt, this last one is a two count ta called a half note. It's two quarter notes glued together. So you'd go tika tika ti ti ta, two beats. Very good. The next one will have a rhythm track backing it like when we're done here. Okay, this one, again, looks scarier than it is. So we've got ta, what's that? Good, a rest, yes, a rest. So this is one one click of nothing. No sound, no clicks, no pats, no nothing. Most times, especially my younger students say, shh, during it. You're allowed to do that. Okay? But as you get older, you just don't say anything. So it would be ta, ta, or ta, shh, shh, ta. Make sure you're doing these two or back to me. Okay? Let's see. No, no, no. This one. Oh, and another rule too. If I do this, they're still the same, okay? This is still a ta, this is still a tt, -t, ta, tt. -t. Upside down works just the same as right side up. So what we're gonna do in the next section is I'm going to have a backing like tempo track and I'm gonna say them, I want you to do them back and then we'll do them a couple times and I'll switch them and switch them and switch them. All these will be pretty easy, I think. All right, here we go. One, two, Ready, go. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, 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 ta. One more time. Ta, 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 ta. Ready, set, here you go. Ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta. Ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta. One more. Ready, set, here you go. Ta, sh, ta. Ta, ta. One more time. Ta, sh, ta. Good. Two, ready, and go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, ti. 
Very good. Ready, set, here we go. Tika, tika, tee, tee, ta. Tika, tika, tee, tee, ta. Tika, tika, tee, tee, ta. Good. The easier one. Here we go. And tee, 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 ta. Tee, 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 ta. Very good. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ti, ti, ta. Ta, ti, ti, ta. Ti, ti, ta. There you go. Uh oh, my music ran out. Hang on. Maybe, maybe. Yes, no. Here we go. Tika tika ta, tika tika ta. Tika tika ta, tika tika ta. Tika tika ta, tika tika ta. Very good. I'm sure you're doing these, not just staring at my my handsome face. I know, but come on. Two, ready and go. Ta ta, tika tika ta. Ta ta. Tika tika ta. One more time. Ta ta. Tika tika ta. This one's hard. It looks harder than it is. You know, this is a T. This is a Tika. T tika t tika t t ta. T tika t tika t t ta. Think the word Montana. Montana, Montana, t t ta. That's what I learned when I was a kid. Montana, Montana, tee, tee, ta. One more time. Ready and go. Ta, tika, ta, tika. Tee, tika, tee, tika, tee, tee, ta. Sorry. Promise that was the hardest one. Super hard. Ready. Ta. Four counts of so solid sound. Ta. Four counts of solid sound. Ta. One more set. Very good. This is a two count break. Two of these good guys. Here we go. Tough one. Ta. Ta. <laughs> Last one. Looks scary, isn't it? These are T's, these are Ta's. Tita, tita, ta. Tita, tita, ta. Awesome job. Okay, guys, so now we're going to review Travel Clef. You guys ready? I'm ready. Of course, you remember we like to use Freddy the Frog, and we remember his island. A lot of you guys also be reviewing, and that's great, because it's always good to review this stuff. So, first, this place. It's a very important place on Travel Clef Island, right? Yes, Freddy, I know you know, but it's for the students to know. Anybody remember who lives at the top of Crabble Clap Island? That's right, it is Freddy the Frog. Freddy the Frog, top of the Treble Clap. F. Very good. What's one step below that? It's a special place. It belongs to somebody else. But it's not his house. Oh, no. It is Eli's Vacation House. Very good. Okay. Stepping down one step. These are those girl bugs. That showed Freddy the Frog Crater Island, if you remember. Yes, I know you know Freddy, but come on, just chill, Freddy, just chill, chill. Right, they're not dragonflies. They're damselflies, okay? They're girl dragonflies. All right, what comes next? I wouldn't want to go swimming here. Nope, 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 nope. Crocodile River. Good job, guys. Okay. These are the bugs that wanted to go to Crater Island, didn't know how, and Freddy, they wanted to go to Crater Island, and they fell in love with the uh, damselflies. The blue beetle bugs. Also, you can remember the bridge, too, because there's a bridge over the Crocodile River. Shh. We're teaching. <laughs> okay. This is where Freddy first met 
Eli. Eli was thump, 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 thumping around this area. Okay. These are pink flowers called azaleas. Very good. All right. Uh-oh. I'm missing a spot. Here we go. These were lizardy dudes. They wanted to eat those blue beetle bugs. <laughs> Remember what they're called? Geckos. Very good. Now, when Freddy's parents go away, Freddy has to stay somewhere. And he can't sleep at Eli's house. No, because it might squish Freddy. So, anybody remember it is Freddy's vacation home. Very good. All right. This house belongs not to Freddy, but to Eli. Very good. Now, we go a little further and we get down here. We also know this place as D Dangles, but this is also known as, especially in Freddy the Frog, is Dolphin Bay. They were trying to get to Crater Island. They used the dolphins to pull to pull the raft to get them to Dolphin Bay. Or <laughs> Crater Island. They used the dolphins. Okay. I know there's one more Freddy. Okay. This is that island in the middle of the sea, also known as Middle Sea. Okay, because it's in between the treble and bass clef. We call it middle, it's the middle of the sea. Freddy the Frog knows it as Crater Island. Okay? Yeah. That's your review of treble clef. What you want to remember is Ernie, or sorry, there's lots of ways to remember, but it's E, G, B, D, F. And I'll put a link to that video from the, we watched in class. E, G, B, D, F. I like to use Ernie Gave Bert Dead Fish. You can use Evil Gummy Bears Destroy Fargo. You can use whatever you want as long as it makes sense. Next video will be Bass Clef. This one scares Freddy a little bit because it is the Bass Clef monster and he does remember that bad dream he had. But hopefully we'll get through the review pretty quick and it won't remind Freddy too much of the scary dream. Let's get started, shall we? Okay, the first thing Freddy saw in his dream, can you remember? And it's been a while since you heard the book, maybe. Can you remember? It was the big black iron gate. Bottom line, G. After the gate slammed shut on Freddy, he saw an orchard of... Anybody remember? Apple trees. That's right. Apple trees. A for apple trees. Cool. All right, next. So Freddy ate, slurped, and burped all those flies at the... Shh. He slurped and burped all the flies at the apple trees. Then he crawled in here and saw a big wall of dancing bees. And they told him, hey, I don't know where Treble Clef Island is. Go that way. Go check out the Bass Clef Monster. Which, by the way, that's the Bass Clef Monster symbol, right? You can tell because he's got two eyeballs. And that's his shell. We'll cover that later. All right, so he got past the bees and he ran right into one of these. The cocoon. Okay? If you know what's in there, shh, I'm not giving no spoilers. All right, so after he bumped past the cocoon, he kept walking and he saw a big whoosh, whoosh, flash and a big bolt of fire in the sky. Anybody remember what that was? Right. The dragon. Okay? The dragon and the bees guard the cocoons. And the dragon said, Look, I don't know where Treble Clef Island is. Go that way. Keep going up. The base cleft monster will help you, all right? You think he'd question something. Okay, so then he saw this big gray creature off in the distance. He thought it was Eli, but it was definitely not Eli. It was a mean old lady elephant, E for elephant. Good job, guys. Okay, so then the elephant said, look, I don't know, but the base cleft monster will help. So tell you what, I'm going to bring you over to him. She picks him up, plops him down on this place. The base left monster always, always watches this place. Remember what it is? The frog log. Very good. I hope you're answering and not just staring at me. All right, next. Freddy said, look, I can't stay. I can't stay on this frog log anymore. It's too scary. So he jumped off the frog log and crawled into the what? Anybody remember? The grass. Very good. So we got the grass. It's up here above the frog log. All right. G again, just like gate is green because gate's down here. 
grass is up here. The letters repeat, especially in musical alphabet. All right, and in that grass, he met a little bug that said, hey, Base Cliff Monster is bad news. You got to get out of here. Remember what that little bug was? Annie the Ant. Great. Now, this one is technically in Tribal Cliff Island, but I think that's where the Base Cliff Monster lives because the last thing you see, of course, in the book is the Base Cliff Monster. But his the part of me is on the map is actually here under Crater Island in the blowhole. Okay, I honestly think that the base cuff monster lives in the blowhole. It makes sense, right? Because it attaches. Um, I'm gonna post so good job reviewing guys, base clef and travel clef uh, with Freddy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link to Freddy the Frog's webpage under my video here. I'm going to post a link to the his webpage. You can check out games. You can check out coloring pages. There are some videos, but it's like part of the book's being read. You're certainly welcome to check those out. Um, good and job. And now the singing portion of our program. Our song selection today is called Big World, Small World by Teresa Jennings from the Music K8 magazine. Uh, credits down below just to make sure I'm doing everything all right. Please make sure you sing along with us today. is a person who writes music and the composer I have selected for this week's lesson is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart who lived in the classical era around 1750 to 1790 so when the country was new and he was considered a child prodigy now a prodigy is a person sometimes children sometimes adults that can pick up a skill without any practice whatsoever and they can play they're just really 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 good at it without even trying and that's really how Mozart's life kind of started uh, 
there's going to be three parts to this. The first part, I'm going to read you a little story about him as a child. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of his music and some of the things he did. Um, and then there are links below to um, YouTube clips of some of his work, just to kind of show you what he did. Um, okay, so Mozart composed in a period of time called the Classical Era, and that doesn't refer to the music, it refers to the time period. It's around 1750 to 1820, so right around the time America became a country. Um, at this time, so... Previously, music was very, very ornamented, had tons of music, tons of stuff going on, lots of extra notes, lots of pretty things. I mean, if you see a very, 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 very pretty old building, it's probably done in Baroque style, which was before classical. Classicals cleaned everything up. It was very much, we play the simple line, okay? We play the simple line, we weren't adding extra frills or colors or anything like that, and it was also a time for composers to kind of showcase their ability and talent and even players too. But a lot of composers almost insisted, almost said to players, you will play what is on the page. You will not add extra things. So during this time, you get composers such as Clementi, um, who did a ton of piano work, Haydn, who did a piece called The Surprise Symphony, which is Another Day, um, Mozart, which is who we're talking about today, and Beethoven, which is a very, very, very famous name. Um, also during this time, um, a lot of Greek and Roman architecture comes back because they, the people loved the elegance. They liked the smooth columns. They liked the, the clean lines. They really wanted it to be pristine. So composers and artists all had to focus on the cleanliness of art. Instead of having a bunch of stuff happening, it was very much simple. The simple landscapes, the simple portraits, stuff like that. Um, but musically, the same thing happened because it all kind of goes hand in hand. A lot of composers kept it very simple. Okay, Now, it doesn't just say it wasn't hard music or wasn't good listening music, but they kept it without frills but they also wanted to show off how good they were. So music would be complex and lots of notes, but it wasn't overly pretty. Um, also, the piano was invented during this time. In, uh, before this time, they used something called a harpsichord, which was, it looked kind of like a small piano, and except it had little fingers that came and would pluck the strings as you hit the buttons. Harpsichords couldn't get louder or quieter. And... So they invented this call, thing called the Forte Piano because it is literally the loud, quiet machine. And that's, of course, you push the button, which makes a little hammer hit the strings. Composers were like, wow, we can start adding volume in these keyboard pieces when they couldn't before. So classical composers really wanted to focus on making things look nice but also adding these colors and these styles to it. And you'll hear some of that later on. Um, they just wanted to make it nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read you this book. Um, it's Mozart. It's a little, it's kind of a story from his youth. It's not like a full biography, but it's a story from his youth. And I'll do my best to show you the pictures as we go. Now, there's a few names in here, like the name Nanurl is the nickname of his sister, Maria. Nanurl was having a music lesson. Her father, Leopold, was teaching her. Little Wolfgang was watching and listening to every note she played. When her lesson was over, he asked, Please, may I have a lesson, Papa? You are too little, Wolfie, said Father Mozart. When Father Mozart and Nanero left the room, little Wolfgang went up to the clavier and pressed the keys. He smiled. The music sounded beautiful. Father Mozart heard him and came to see. Wolfgang was playing correctly without anyone helping him. Father Mozart decided to give his little boy music lessons. Soon, Wolfgang was playing as well as his big sister, Nanurl. He learned so quickly, his father was very pleased. But when Wolfgang started to write his own music to compose, Father Mozart was delighted. No one could believe that a little boy of five could write such beautiful music. Now, Father Mozart decided 
to take his two bright children on a concert tour to Munich, Germany. It was a long trip. Inside the coach, it was very bumpy, but still they had to work. Father Mozart made them practice on a make-believe keyboard. As soon as they arrived in Munich, people began to talk about the talented little Mozart children. Dressed in their best clothes, they played for Prince Joseph. The concert was a huge success. Everyone clapped and gave them presents of jewels and lace. Father Mozart was very proud of them. One large lady was so excited she ran over to the little boy, picked him up in her arms, and gave him a loud, sloppy kiss. Yuck! said Wolfgang as he wiggled away and wiped his face. Back home in Salzburg, Austria, Wolfgang was so pleased to see his mother and his funny little dog, Bimperl. He had missed them very much. Wolfgang hugged, hugged Bimperl and then wrote a little minuet to celebrate his return. It was January 1762, just days before his sixth birthday. A few days later, Father Mozart gave Wolfgang a present. It was a little violin. That night, when Papa's friends arrived carrying their own instruments, Wolfgang ran to get his own little fiddle. But Papa shook his head. No, Wolfgang, you cannot possibly play with us until you've had some lessons and lots of practice. Wolfgang burst into tears. One of Mr. Mozart's friends, Mr. Sch Schachner, felt sorry for Wolfgang. Come on, Leopold, he said. Let the child stand near me. I don't mind. Oh, very well, said Father Mozart. But remember to play softly, Wolfgang, so no one will hear you. Wolfgang smiled through his tears, and standing next to Mr. Schachner, he began to follow the music. Gradually, Mr. Schachner played softly and quieter and quieter until he stopped playing altogether. Little Wolfgang continued playing. Father Mozart could not believe his eyes or ears. How could this little boy play such, a dif such difficult music without any lessons? Their next trip was to Vienna, Austria, and this time their mother came too. One day, an important invitation arrived. It had a royal crest. Wolfgang and Nanerl were to play at the royal palace for the emperor and the empress. There was such excitement. Clothes were washed and ironed. Shoes were polished till they shined like mirrors. Then they all climbed into the coach and started off to the palace. The emperor, the empress, and the royal children were waiting in the throne room. Wolfgang looked sadly at the children. Will we be allowed to play with some games with them, he wondered. First Wolfgang performed, then Nanerl. Then they played duets together. The royal family sat motionless. They could not believe... All that wonderful music was being played by such a little boy and his sister. Well, he's only about eight. While Mr. and Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Mozart talked with the emperor and the empress, Wolfgang and Nanerl played with the royal children. Whoops! cried Wolfgang as he slipped and fell on the polished floor. The little archduchess, Marie Antoinette, helped him to his feet. You are very kind, said the little boy. When I grow up, I will marry you. After the children had gone home, their hands filled with gifts from the empress, and the emperor stroked his chin. What a smart little boy. We must invite them again. I will test him a little. I would like to see if he's as good as he seems. Two days later, the most wonderful clothes were delivered to the Mozart children. They were a present from the empress. Wolfgang gasped. His suit was fit for a prince. There were white silk stockings, velvet trousers, and a lilac purple jacket with a beautiful vest. Nanerl's vest dress was pink with white embroidery. They wore these beautiful clothes when they went back to the palace the next week. Mr. and Mrs. Mozart, Masters Wolfgang, and Miss Nanerl announced the footmen. As soon as Wolfgang saw the Empress, he ran across the floor, climbed on her lap, flung his arms around her neck, and gave her a big kiss. What are you gonna what are you going to play, little one? asked the Emperor, smiling. 
I shall play my allegro in B-flat major, Wolfgang replied. He slid off the empress's knee and ran over to the clavier. Very good, said the emperor, but first of all, I wish to place this over the keys. And he held up a large black cloth. Mozart sighed and made no difference to him. He could play the clavier without looking at the keys. The emperor put the black cloth over the keyboard. Wolfgang placed his hands on the cloth and played his allegro perfectly. Well done, cried the emperor and the empress. So they were testing him. Father Leopold took Nannerl and Wolfgang to many different countries. One trip lasted three years and five months. Wherever they went, they gave concerts. Everyone admired them and gave him presents. They called Wolfgang Mozart the Wonder Boy. Wolfgang grew up to become one of the greatest composers of all time. Even today, people all over the world love to perform and to listen to his wonderful music. He wrote over 700 works, including symphonies, concertos, sonatas, and masses. He wrote 23 operas, and the most famous of these are The Marriage of Figaro, Cosi Fan Tutte, Don Giovanni, and The Magic Flute. Now that you know a little bit about, more about Mozart, I strongly urge you to click the links below to uh, hear some of his more famous works and some of his other works. There's a lot out there. I mean, over 700 pieces of music, and I only picked two. <laughs> There's tons out there to listen to. Uh, like I said, after you listen, if you want to jot down below in the comments what you thought or, you know, whatever, just write down maybe keep a log of what you listened to and what you thought, you know, why was it a good piece? Why was it not such a good piece? Who knows? Um, do you have to like it? I never said that, but you got to appreciate it because really he was one of the front runners of the music we have today. Um, and his music's used in all sorts of places. So go ahead and take a listen, write down maybe some thoughts, some ideas. You can drop them in the comments too, if you want. Um, and then we'll move on to the next thing shortly. Go to it. Seriously. Click, click. Down there. Not here. Down there. One more thing to do for this week is um, take a minute and share something that you learned or something that you found interesting or even, you know, share something with your parents. Uh, do some rhythm work. Dance to a song. Do something. But share share the music. I'll tell you that being stuck in your house and not having music on and not having that background is not a fun experience. So keep that music going. Keep it flowing. Go back and sing Big World, Small World again. But what I want you to do is I want you to share the music with each other and I want you to share music with your parents. Okay? Ask them what their favorite song is. Ask them what their favorite music is. I bet most of you don't even know. Okay, ask them what their favorite song is. With the wealth of information we have available on YouTube, there is zero excuse. And the final thing, there's one more link. There's four links on this. The fourth link is a piece of music that is one of my personal favorites, and I just want to share with you. It's not necessarily Mozart, but it's just one of my favorite pieces of music, and I want to share it with you guys. So I hope you have a wonderful week, and uh, check back frequently for more of these. Catch gonna end with two jokes today i know i lost a sweater but eh, it's hot okay two jokes first one what's a chicken's favorite composer bach 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 wah, wah. and the second one i heard from a friend of mine i loved it i said why can't you write with a broken pencil because it's pointless <laughs>